Hello, this is Domenico with Easynomics, and we're going to look at cap and trade schemes, also known as tradable permits, as a solution to negative externalities of pollution. And this is the third solution that we're looking at. We have previously looked at a Pigovian tax on output, a Pigovian tax or indirect tax on carbon or carbon taxes. Now we're looking at tradable permits. Our applied example will be looking at the European Union emissions trading system. This is the system that has been set up to allow firms to buy and sell permits, which essentially gives them the permission to pollute up until a certain cap. Um, more, There's some information about that also on Wikipedia, highlighting that the European Union emissions trading system covers about 11,000 factories, power stations, and other installations, right? In the hopes of capping carbon emissions and over time reducing carbon emissions. In this chart, we can see the change in the price of these permits over time going up and down. And essentially it is market forces that is causing this price to change. And that's what our model can illustrate, a price rising or falling due to the force of supply and demand. So let's go ahead and, and graph that. So um, we've illustrated a negative externality of production. We have used the example of the market for electricity being generated by coal-fired power stations, uh, power stations utilizing fossil fuels such as coal, burning that coal to generate electricity, but it leads to the negative externality of carbon emissions. So we have already graphed and analyzed this. The goal of the solution is to find different ways to effectively cause the supply curve to shift in by the amount of the externality. So tradable permits is one attempt at trying to do that. So let's say, for example, we'll use um, a, you know, a very um, basic example. We're going to simplify this. We'll have two firms, all right, or two power stations. Let's say it's firm A and firm B, okay? And they both generate electricity by utilizing coal, all right? Now let's say that the EU, through their investigations, have highlighted that uh, the European Union can, um, should put a cap, let's say, on you know, 10 million tons of carbon being emitted into the atmosphere, all right? That will be the cap. No more than 10,000, I'm sorry, 10 million, 10 million tons of carbon being emitted into the atmosphere. That is a sustainable and tolerable level that the uh, environment can handle. Anything beyond that, then we're going to lead, it will lead to some levels of climate change, all right? So 10,000, ah, why do I keep saying 10,000? 10 million tons of carbon, all right? Let me just put in the units. 10 million right, tons of carbon emissions is an acceptable level uh, agreed on by economists, environmentalists, and so on. So let's just make that assumption. So from that, the EU could potentially generate 10 million permits, all right? Just giving a very simplified example. And so one permit allows for the release of one ton of carbon emissions. Okay. So they're going to distribute these 10 million permits to different firms within their economy. So in this case, let's just assume that firm A and firm B are essentially the same in terms of their economies of scale, their output, and so forth. So it makes the job easy for the EU, and they will allocate 5 million permits to firm A and then 5 million permits to firm B. Okay, and each of these firms can use these permits to generate um, production leading to 5 million tons of carbon emissions. Okay, and it will not exceed the 10 million um, ton carbon emission cap. But what this does is that it allows firms to um, find ways to uh, move towards renewables and if they move towards renewables it frees up permits they don't need those permits and they can sell those permits to another, another firm so let's say that firm a starts investing in solar power wind power and that over time they don't really need the five million um, permits 
you know, they're, they're producing uh, electricity by burning coal and it only requires 10, um, 1 million uh, permits for them to generate 1 million tons of carbon emissions. So that frees up 4 million, right? 4 million permits have been freed up by firm A, which they can sell. And let's say firm B is powering a particular country or a city, and over time the demand for electricity is increasing, and they have not made these steps towards moving towards renewables, but in order to produce more energy, um, they will have to buy more permits because it's going to lead to more carbon emissions. So they can buy these 4 million permits from firm A, and they will go to firm B, and now firm B can produce 5 plus 4 million they can produce up to 9 million tons of carbon emissions while firm A is maintaining itself at 1 million um, tons of carbon emissions through their permits. So that's the idea of this buying and selling of permits between firms. So it allows for a market system to take hold and also hopefully incentivizes firms to uh, move towards renewables so that they can sell their permits and profit from the sale of those, their, those permits. It also forces firms that want to increase their output and their carbon emissions to pay for it. And if they increase their demand for permits, it will cause the value of those permits to rise. So they'll have to pay for that and that will cover the social costs of their production. So to illustrate, we just need a perfectly inelastic uh, supply of permits graph. Oh, let's use a straight line, which we have here. And we'll label that S1, right, which is the supply of permits, or S1 equal to the supply of tradable permits. And it's perfectly inelastic because there is a fixed quantity of permits in circulation. So from our example, that would be 10 million, the quantity of 10 million permits in existence, no more, no less, right? Um, all right, we'll call that Q1 in just a second. You'll see why. So now we need our demand for permits, right? And the demand is coming from these various firms, in this case, power stations that are demanding permits so that they can burn coal and generate electricity. Demand's downward sloping, all right, according to the law of demand. And the equilibrium is set where D1 is equal to S1. That will establish the value of the permits, all right, which we'll say is at P1, okay? Great, so here we have um, supply and demand, the quantity supply and demand at Q1, and the value of the permits at P1. Now again, like we used in our example, let's say that firm B is, is experiencing an increase in demand for energy, and thus they have to ramp up their production of electricity by uh, buying more coal and burning that burning that coal, but they only have 5 million permits and they would like to acquire more. So they can acquire more from firm A. Like we used in our example, they acquire 4 million additional permits, but because they are demanding permits, their demand for permits will rise from D1 to D2. Thus their increased demand will lead to an increase in the value of the permits. And thus it will be expensive for firm B to buy these permits, all right? But still they are, they are um, accounting for the social costs of their production. So the price of permits rises from P1 to P2, okay? We can relate this to our negative externality graph because we can state that as the firm's demand for permits increases from D1 to D2, it causes the price or the value of those permits to rise from P1 to P2. That becomes an additional cost to the firm, and so the firm must internalize that cost, and we know that an additional cost causes the supply curve to shift inward. Thus, S1 is shifting to S2 in our negative externality graph, achieving allocative efficiency at point C, because the optimal price incurs the private cost of production plus the cost of acquiring more permits to pollute more into the atmosphere. While remaining or while keeping that cap of 10 million uh, tons of carbon, no more being emitted uh, into the atmosphere within the EU in this particular example.
So we can see how tradable permits can determine the price of permits, basic forces of supply and demand, causing it to rise and fall. Now, one concern with this system is that let's say that the price of permits falls, that eventually many firms begin to uh, move towards renewables, and so the demand for permits starts to decrease. Okay. So over time, as power stations start to move towards renewables, their demand for these permits starts to decrease, let's say, from D2 to D1. Thus, the value of those permits starts to fall from P2 to P1. Okay? Or we can say A, B, C. Let's say this is point D, point E. All right? It's falling. So now it's becoming cheaper to acquire permits and cheaper to pollute. So again, we see in this graph the danger of the permits becoming too cheap, and we see that it falls right in this period, right? and then it starts to rise again. Right? How can we solve this? We don't want uh, these permits to be too cheap so that we're incentivizing firms to go back to the old ways of using fossil fuels and emitting more carbon to the atmosphere. If that happens, what the government can do, or what the EU can do, is reduce the supply of um, permits in circulation, all right? So they can buy some of those additional permits, absorb them, and reduce the overall supply. So we can get it to shift from S1 to S2, for example. Shifts in from S1 to S2, the EU um, is reducing the amount of permits in circulation, and then we can bring the price of permits back up to P2. Okay, along the demand curve from DE, all right, it goes to, let's say, point F. Okay, thus it can explain why the price is rising. Potentially, and I haven't investigated this, I will assume this to be the case, it's either a result of a decrease in the supply of permits or a result of an increase in the demand um, for permits. Okay, so hopefully that. Uh, that is clear. So let's go ahead and analyze this as we would for a paper exam. As can be seen, we have two graphs illustrated. Uh, graph A is the market for electricity generated by coal-fired power stations. And graph B is the market for tradable permits. Graph A illustrates a negative externality. We have a downward sloping demand curve labeled D1 equal to the marginal private benefit equal to the marginal social benefit. And we have two upward sloping supply curves. S1 is equal to the marginal private costs of producing electricity through burning coal. And S2 is the marginal social cost of the carbon emissions negatively affecting society. Where S1 equals D1, it sets an equilibrium price in the free market at PM, equilibrium quantity in the free market at QM. But we notice that at QM, the marginal social cost at point B is greater than the marginal social benefit at point A. Thus, it generates a welfare loss, which is the shaded area. Welfare loss in terms of negative impacts on the atmosphere, climate change, negative impacts perhaps on human health, increasing uh, lung disease, and so on. Social optimum would be achieved where S2 or MSC equals MSB at point C, providing the optimal price, where price includes the private and social costs, and that higher price will lead to a decrease whoops, in the quantity demanded all right, along the demand curve from point A to point C, all right, or from QM to QOPT, and a decrease in the quantity supplied from QM to QOPT, thus achieving allocative efficiency where MSC equals MSB. So how does um, governments seek to reduce the supply of electricity generated by coal-fired power stations? One technique, one solution, here we have solution number three, is the use of tradable permits, where, let's say, the EU sets a cap on the maximum amount of carbon emissions that will be tolerated, that's acceptable and sustainable. Perhaps it's 10 million tons of carbon. And they will issue, let's say, 10 million permits, each permit equal to one ton of carbon emissions. This allows firms to buy and sell permits as needed. So let's say, for example, that this particular firm, represented in graph A, needs to increase production because they're experiencing increasing demand for electricity in their particular city or country. So they only have a fixed quantity of permits, but they can buy additional permits, which they do from other firms. Um, and that leads to that to 
the firm increasing their demand for permits from D1 to D2 in the market for tradable permits. So perhaps I should go back where S1 equals D1, it establishes a price for permits at point D at P1, but now firms are, uh, this firm is demanding more permits, so their demand increases from D1 to D2, thus it sets a new equilibrium where D2 equals S1 at point E, and it causes the price of those permits to rise from P1 to P2. Notice that the quantity supply and demand for permits is fixed at Q1. Okay, only 10 million permits in existence. That higher price from P1 to P2 becomes an additional cost to the firm. And that additional cost causes their supply curve to shift in, in theory, by the amount of the externality from S1 to S2. So now they can produce, but it's more costly. And because it's more costly, the price of their electricity will go up. So the household will also have to pay for that. But in essence, at point C, we've achieved allocative efficiency. All right, so that's the idea. But let's say, for example, that over time, demand for permits decreases. Firms begin to shift towards renewables. Uh, they, they're incentivized to um, free up their permits to sell at a profit. And so over time, demand for permits shifts in from, D1 to D, uh, from D2 to D1. D1 equal to S1, providing an equilibrium price at P1, at point D. Right, the price has fallen. Um, and there's a danger that if the permits are too cheap, you might incentivize firms to resort towards going back to polluting, um, using uh, fossil fuels to generate electricity in this particular case, and uh, not solving the externality. So a way to solve that is the government can intervene and reduce the supply of permits from S1 to S2, where S2 equals D1. At point F, it raises the price of permits again to P2, making it costly for firms to pollute. Okay? So that is it. That's uh, an explanation of tradable permits, an analysis of both graphs, and in the information section of this YouTube video, I will provide an outline of the analysis of this graph to help you with your paper exams. And if you have any questions, feel free to comment, and don't forget to subscribe and to like. Thank you so much.